welcome to the vlog and welcome back to my channel. Hi guys, welcome back to Books and Tea Time with me, Adeline. It is Monday, June 22nd. It's about 9.30 at night. I just finished up um, a pretty, you know, normal day just doing different things. I edited last week's vlog which will be live right now. I had a doctor's appointment, did some food shopping, um, just the boring old stuff but I am here to give you the introductory clip and we're gonna talk about my reading plans for the week. Um, aside from reading plans, uh, I don't have too much going on this week. I have work for the first time in forever on Saturday, which is going to be great um, because I need money to support my book buying addiction. But other than that, I'm just going to be doing some research work, doing some fun reading, and yeah, that's that. So first things first, I'm still reading my Byron biography for research, and I'm also still reading the Amber Spyglass, which is the third book in the His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. I am rereading this for research purposes. I just read about 50 pages on the porch. Um, it's really nice, like, cool evening out after the rain. So I read a little bit on the porch, was really relaxing. I'm probably going to read a little more of this before I go to bed, but I'm just rereading it, as I said, for a research project. I've mentioned this in the previous vlogs, um, but I also really love the series and I can't recommend it enough. It's an amazing, amazing amazing fantasy series and I just love it so much. Philip Pullman just gets ya, you know? So I am planning on hopefully finishing this book this week. Also, I am in the middle of listening to uh, the audiobook of The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. It's a really great story. It takes place over um, several decades. It's like from, I think, the 50s to the 80s or 60s to the 80s something like that and basically it's a fiction with a hint of like thriller mystery i don't read a lot of thriller mysteries but it has that vibe to me um and it's about two sisters they're twin sisters and one of them sort of leaves abruptly leaves the other twin they're kind of um, intertwined for their early life and then when they begin adulthood um, they sort of branch off and it kind of just unfolds from there. Uh, it's really interesting how Bennett weaves time together and I'm really enjoying it so far so definitely the priority is to finish the Amber Spyglass and then to finish The Vanishing Half this week. So those are the two that I'm definitely gonna finish. And then I'm also still reading So You Wanna Talk About Race by Ijima Aluo. Uh, I'm hoping to get a good chunk of this in. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it, but definitely wanna sit down and really spend some time with this this week. After that, so I'm continuing. This past weekend um, on the 19th and the 20th, I participated in the Queer Blackathon hosted by Jesse from Botez and Books on YouTube. And I mentioned this in um, a little bit more detail in my previous vlog, but because the books that I ordered are not here yet, the books I ordered for that particular readathon actually didn't come, which is why I ended up downloading The Vanishing Half. Um, because they didn't come, I am going to just extend my own little mini readathon to support queer black authors and queer black books for the rest of the week or just like the rest of the month just for pride and just because I really want to read the books and it's going to take me a longer period of time than I expected. So I will unbox those for you when they arrive. They are not here yet. But in the meantime, before they get here, if I finish The Vanishing Half, I'm probably going to pick up this uh, while I wait for the other books. This is a collection of poetry. It's called If They Come For Us and it's by Fatima Asgar, I think is how you would say this. And it just looks so beautiful. It's really short and I think that, you know, throwing in a little poetry into my reading right now might be a little bit of might spice things up a little bit and I just am really really excited to read this. I unboxed this in my third vlog. I'll have that link down below since I keep talking about it so much um, but I unboxed this and I think that it'll be nice to just pick up this because it's short um, until my other books get here. 
so yeah those are the reading plans for the week but as i said i think i'm gonna sit down and read a little more of the amber spyglass right now i think i'm on page 50 or so um just to continue banging this one out lavender stress relief um, I really love this especially good at nighttime which it is right now and also I'm trying these for the very first time they're like these honey sticks that are pre-packaged and you just cut them and then it's like one serving of honey I assume it's one serving and you put it in your tea and these are um, a gift from Alexander's mom and I thought that was so cute and sweet so I wanted to try them out only 28 calories super cool um, but yeah I thought this was really cute so I'm gonna put this bad boy in my tea getting in our play exercise for the day sit Tuesday night check-in. It's Tuesday, right? Oh my god, I'm so bad at keeping track of time. But anyway, today I read, I think, 30 pages of my Byron biography. It's going really well, but then I fell asleep and took a brief 20-minute nap for basically no reason. Anybody else. I also read 20 to 30 pages of So You Want to Talk About Race. I am about to sit down and read a little bit more of the Amber Spyglass before I fall asleep. I probably won't get too far, but I'm kind of, but I'm just trying to work through this and get a couple more chapters of this read tonight, hopefully. Um, it's so amazing reading this again for the second time. I just love this world so much and I'm probably gonna cry again when I finish it for the second time. Plans for tomorrow. I have to water my plants and I'm hoping that by saying it in this clip it'll help me remember to do that because I was also supposed to water them today and I forgot. So I have to water my plants. I'm also planning a post birthday surprise for Alexander this Thursday. Um, I'm organizing an outing with some of his friends because he's like really anxious and also just kind of lazy about planning things. Um, Alexander, you know that's true, so don't come at me for saying that when you watch this. I was talking with him and he was like, yeah, I'd really like to get together with like some of my friends, like the people that he plays Xbox with or like some of his like grade school, high school friends that he's still in touch with. So I reached out to them and we're gonna try and go out and get a drink. But that's another thing that I have to do tomorrow. And then I'm also getting my first post quarantine haircut to tame this mane and lip wax because your girl's Italian and it's visible. Stay tuned. <laughs> Good night. Also, I forgot to say this, um, but these are the sticky notes that I use. If you guys were wondering, I usually buy the bigger multicolored pack, but I just uh, asked my dad to pick these up because I was running out. But yeah, if you're wondering what my preferred sticky note brand is, it is these bad boys. Um, yeah, but now I will actually get to reading. Like I said, I would. Snuggles. Hey guys, just popping on to say I'm about to go to my hair appointment, but I finished listening to The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I'll come on later to give more detailed breakdown, but I really loved it. 4.5 out of 5 stars was the rating that I gave it, and I'll break that down as I said a little bit later, but I'm running late for my hair appointment, and I just wanted to say I finished a book, and I am just under the halfway point through the amber spyglass i still haven't gotten my other books that i'm expecting in the mail yet so if i 
don't get those tomorrow I'll probably start if they come for us tomorrow as I said in my first clip so yeah also let me just quickly show you my OTD here we are guys it's my super nifty outfit really old shirt and some new oversized boyfriend shorts living the dream am I right I took him outside to pee and he immediately laid down right there what the heck Hello, everybody. It's Thursday. Sorry I didn't vlog too much yesterday. I feel like I was not in the vlogging spirit yesterday. Not sure why, but I did get my hair cut. I don't know if you can tell. It was really just a trim, but I got the layers put back in. I read a good chunk of the Amber Spyglass yesterday as I showed you guys. I think I'm past the halfway point now, so I'm hoping to finish that really quick. Um, I'm about to jump on a Zoom call, which is why I have my blue light glasses on. Also, I just think they're so cute, and I don't have, like, prescription lenses, but I love these, so I wear them any chance that I get. I think they're super cutesy. Anyway, I wanted to give my review, official review, for The Vanishing Half. I had so much fun listening to this book it was so good i ended up giving it 4.5 out of 5 stars i don't know if i said that yesterday uh it was really really good characters i gave a 5 out of 5 i loved all of the characters in this book and watching the character growth there's some really great representation uh we have a trans character in this book and i feel like i was able to understand a lot more about trans identity and things that a trans person that has to encounter and like work through in a romantic relationship that I wouldn't have considered before so I was really glad to engage with a trans character. I don't want to give too much of a synopsis because I feel like this book like I really know knew nothing about it other than everyone was giving it raving reviews before I went into it and I think that's the best way to go into it because I feel like you either have to give an incredibly vague and confusing description of this book or you have to give nearly too much away like I don't want to give too much away and sort of like spoil things that happen but essentially it revolves around twin sisters and their lives and they are from a very small southern town called Mallard and in this town all of the people of color are incredibly light-skinned so we have a lot of discussions surrounding colorism and how that even is present in like a family and how like mother and daughter react a little bit differently depending on um, if their skin is the same color. Also I just really loved all the characters seeing them make decisions in their lives and how that pans out and how people who are so similar like twins can have two drastically different lives based on their decision making um, and the things that they decide to do with their life and the risks that they decide to take so I really loved that. Uh, as far as world and plot, I gave that a 5 out of 5. I really loved- this story takes place over, I think, like two, maybe three generations, depending on how you look at it. And I loved the way that Bennett weaves time together. It's not like you start in one generation and then you proceed to the next. She weaves the time periods together and like gives you snippets from the past when the twins were young and then you jump to the future when they're older and then you jump to when they're mothers and you follow their children. Entertainment value I gave four out of five. I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Intellectual value five out of five. The representation was incredible. There's some great like snippets about motherhood in it that I really enjoyed and the how both twins act and represent themselves as mothers and how they interact with their children is really interesting and I feel like I really enjoyed that aspect of the story. Timelessness I gave 5 out of 5. Even though it takes place at a very specific time, I think that the broader discussions that Bennett engages in are very present even today and the, and the characters and the things that they deal with are still incredibly relevant which I think is one of the reasons that it's so popular right now but also just because it's incredible writing and an incredible story. And then my bias I gave 4 out of 5. The reason I gave entertainment value in my bias 4 out of 5 is because I don't typically read 
fiction so well, i don't know how to explain this because i read classics i read historical fiction i read fantasy those are like the biggest genres and then nonfiction is probably like the fourth subgenre that i read a lot so i don't read a lot of contemporary fiction not in i mean i don't read contemporary fiction but even though this isn't technically set in the contemporary moment it's like the 50s to the 80s i think it's like written today so i call it contemporary i don't know if i'm making sense at all if this makes sense to you i just don't read a lot of fiction published in the present day unless it takes place in the past so i feel like i just was like unfamiliar and unprepared with the genre and I think that it slightly affected my experience but I still loved the book so much so I don't think it really impacted it all that much it's just like and ultimately it didn't affect my writing of the book really at all I just wanted to mention that because I feel like if you're not familiar with a genre or you're not ready for a genre it can kind of impact how you experience it I also just feel like I have that tendency like I'm very quick to give a fantasy book a five out of five stars because I'm so familiar with fantasy and I know what good fantasy is because I know what bad fantasy is but like when I encounter like a romance for example I don't read a lot of romance at all so I feel like I'm not like an authority on saying what is great and what is not great for romance so I tend to be a little more cautious I guess when I'm reading them but like honestly what does my reading even mean? It's just a representation of how much I enjoyed the book and I enjoyed this book immensely. I highly highly recommend it. Absolutely deserves all the hype that it's getting on Instagram and booktube. So yeah that's my update. I'm gonna go to my meeting now and then I have to water my plants because I never did that even though I told you guys that I was going to do that. So we're gonna water my plants. Hello! It's a few short hours later guys. Um, so after I got off the last clip I got on zoom for a meeting that went pretty well and then I sat down and I read an entire book who am I so I ended up picking up if they come for us I really wanted to try out some poetry I think I had said that before in a previous clip so I read this bad boy today and it was so so good I'm definitely I flagged a lot of the poems that I really liked or I felt were really like intense and rich and needed to be reread I mean all of them need to be reread and I probably will reread it at some point because I feel like poetry at least for me as someone who doesn't read poetry a lot I need to reread it a few times especially if they're shorter poems that like pack a punch um so I'm probably going to reread definitely going to reread a lot of my favorites but I really loved this I'm not going to use my conventional rating system because my conventional rating system is really only for fiction books it doesn't really apply to poetry as much um, but I really loved this so I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars on my Goodreads. It was so beautiful and impactful. I love, I loved the creativity behind each poem. Like there are a lot of like ways that um, Asgar um, uses space really beautifully. It's like each poem has a different physical composition that reflects a little bit of the material and what it's about. This is just an example of one of my favorite ones. It's called Microaggression Bingo and she has each square is a microaggression that she has experienced. And I thought that one was really, really beautiful. And I loved that the way that she used um, the bingo setup for that and the way that the language and the words interact with the space and also articulate her experiences as a Pakistani Muslim woman in America, as an orphan who who was raised by her aunt and uncle I believe. She just articulates all these experiences about childhood and identity and finding yourself but also um, there are just there's just really great moments and I just really really loved it. I thought it was beautiful. Um, it did give me some teary-eyed like gut-wrenching feelings uh, at times but I really loved it and I just finished another book. So I finished two books one book yesterday and one book today which is super great for thursday um i don't know what i'm gonna do next i'm still reading the amber spyglass in the meantime for research um a little over halfway done with that as i said so i'm still gonna be chugging along through that for the rest of the week but also i don't know what to pick up next but right now 
I'm about to go to Alexander's and then I'm gonna take him somewhere and we're gonna have drinks with some of his friends for his 21st birthday, which was, we celebrated in the last vlog. If you're interested, I'll have a link down below. Guess what finally arrived, y'all? My books. It's time. <laughs> that was so weird. It is time for the long awaited, much anticipated unboxing that I've been promising since last vlog. I just took a shower, my hair is wet, but I can wait no longer to open these bad boys up. Uh, today I'm wearing my favorite t-shirt of all time. This is, um, I don't even know where this is from. I got this as a hand-me-down like years and years ago, but it's my favorite shirt of all time. I freaking love it. It's a rework or like reimagining of a movie poster for Forbidden Planet, which is a movie from like the 70s, I think. I actually don't know. I have seen it. I've only seen it once, but it is Bender and Leela from Futurama. And I just, I think it's the coolest, most creative shirt in the world so i love it and i wanted to show you guys i have no idea where it's from don't even know if it still exists so sorry i just think this is so freaking dope um so i wanted to show you guys so let's get into the unboxing just a quick preface to this unboxing i bought three books two of them i bought as part of like the black publishing power post or like movement i don't even know what to call it last week from like june 15th to june 20th um people were encouraged to buy two books by black authors to try and boost black authors to like the top of all of the publishing pages so i bought two of these three books for that but i also just bought all of these three books with queer blackathon in mind which actually happened last vlog but essentially queer blackathon is just reading as many queer black books as you can in 48 hours but that 48 hour period is over um but I don't really care. So I'm just gonna keep reading queer black books. I'm like getting a workout and trying to open this freaking box. We're in, uh, and it is the one that I was hoping it was. Okay, so first things first, I have Patsy. Oh, it has a cute little read with Jenna sticker on it. I don't know who Jenna is. Maybe I should find out, um, but this is this book is Patsy by Nicole Dennis Ben. I bought this as per a recommendation from Jesse uh, at Bowties and Books. The cover is gorgeous, so I immediately wanted to buy it. The little uh, blurby blurb um, on this says a beautifully layered portrait of motherhood, immigration, and the sacrifices we make in the name of love from award-winning novelist Nicole Dennis Ben. All I really know about this um is that it follows our main character patsy who is from jamaica she receives letters from an old flame slash friend who is living in new york and she i believe decides to go to new york um with her child and they travel to new york so i'm very interested to read this i really really love books um about motherhood i took um a class called women in literature and we explored the theme of motherhood and like smothering mother figures and just like different ways that um mothers and like the crone figure or the mother figure can often be twisted in literature to be monstrous and demonic so um i'm not saying that that's what's gonna happen here but i just love reading books that explore and comment on motherhood so i'm really excited for this for that reason but also to get an lgbt romance representation in this book also the cover is just gorgeous comment down below if you've read this book um and let me know what you think life gives you lemons but sometimes it also gives you cuts so be careful out there you know what i'm saying so the second book that i got is girls of paper and fire by natasha ngan and I got this because I was watching just a bunch of like hauls or recommendation videos on YouTube and back to back I got 
I saw a recommendation from Jesse from Botas and Books to get this and read this and also Janani from The Story Ain't Over recommended this as well and uh, I just am really really excited oh my god that's so cool so there's a little card in here from the author that's so so I didn't know I was gonna get something like that. That's adorable. Okay, so it says Dear Owl Crate Reader. So I'm assuming that whoever received this, and I got this from a used bookstore. So I'm assuming that whoever donated this to the used bookstore kept this Owl Crate card in it. Um, it says, in my land, we're known as paper girls, easily torn, existing only for others to use and discard. But there's something they've all forgotten about paper. It can light the world on fire and make it burn. Um, and then there's this adorable little card written by the author. I'm gonna read that later. I got this in the hopes of reading more LGBT books because I believe there's a female female romance in this, if I'm remembering correctly. And I believe that two of these paper girls who are serving the king fall in love. As I was finding all of these really great recommendation videos and really great recommendation Instagram posts to diversify my shelf. I realized that it's not just black authors that I'm lacking on my shelf, it's a bunch of different minority groups and so I decided to pick this up um, as per recommendation from both Jessie and Jenny because I wanted to include some Asian authors on my shelf. I got this book as part of my pride haul to read during pride month but also just to diversify my shelf and include more Asian authors so that's what we're gonna do the third book I bought which was the second book that I bought for the black publishing power um, challenge I guess we'll call it this is the one that I think I'm gonna start first I'm so excited for this book you guys it's just as beautiful as I imagined guys the third and final book that I purchased is The Deep by River Solomon. So I am thrilled to be reading this book. I heard um, Jesse from Bowties and Books talk about this book, as I said, but also since then I have seen so many people haul this book on Bookstagram and on YouTube, and one of my other favorite booktubers, Noelle Gallagher, uh, also just read this, and I just, I want to read it so bad. It's about the mermaid descendants of slaves from slave ships who um, did not make it um, across in the slave trade. I'm not 100% sure what happens, but I was just so intrigued by the premise of this book and also we've got a lot of lgbt representation in this book this cover the premise everything i am just so so ready for this book it's it's incredible i cannot wait that's the haul um i hope you guys are as excited for me to read these as i am to read them let me know if you've read any of these i have so many good books on my tbr stack guys i've never been so excited to fly through a tbr stack like i, I just cannot wait plans for the day uh it is friday um afternoon i am probably going to set aside a lot of time today to do some research i really want to finish reading the amber spyglass this week and hopefully the byron biography next week so i'm going to set a lot of, aside a lot of time to do research reading today but saturday and sunday i'm probably going to pick up this also i still haven't freaking watered my plants I'm gonna have to name this video me forgetting to water my plants for like seven days so i'm gonna do that today happy friday people clink hello everybody just got back from work i did not vlog at all today i'm so tired it's been like three or four months since i've worked and like for what I do, I'm a waitress at like a wedding hall, so I'm on my feet like the whole time and I haven't been doing that. So it's like kind of kicks you in the butt. You're just like off your feet and then all of a sudden you're standing on your feet and then like the masks that we wear really like pulled at my ears all day. So I feel like my ears are probably red. They like bend them in a little bit like this. So I look like crazy. But I'm glad and blessed to be working again. I'm not complaining, I'm just stating facts. 
so yeah i just got home and yesterday i read almost till the end of the amber spy glass i have like 70 pages left so i'm probably just gonna spend the rest of the night on that it's 10 o'clock now so i'm probably just gonna finish that up tonight yes happy saturday and i'm tired but a good tired you know like a ooh, i'm gonna sleep real good tonight kind of a tired peace out dudes Okay, guys, we gotta talk about it. <laughs> I just finished my reread of The Amber Spyglass, and guys, it wrecked me again. Um, I thought that rereading it would make it less gut wrenching and just. Oh my god, it's so. It's so good. I. I don't care what your typical genre is, what your typical age range is, if you like fantasy, if you don't like fantasy, you have to read these books. The His Dark Materials Trilogy by Philip Pullman knows no bounds. It is one of the most imaginative, creative, and beautiful things I have ever read in my entire life and now I've read it twice and it's even better the second time and dare I say more painful <laughs> the second time guys it I can't I just it hurts deep deep inside of me it hurts but it's so it's beautiful pain please just read these books the first one's the golden compass second one's the subtle knife third one's the amber spyglass you need to read these books they will break your heart and crush your soul but like in a good way the end i mean the whole book is is rough the whole the whole of the Amber Spyglass is just like a journey. The last couple of chapters, like I, I knew, I, I read this like almost exactly a year ago today. I finished this book, I'm like three days off. And I knew what was gonna happen. I knew everything. And it didn't soften the blow at all because reading their language and their reactions and the raw emotion please ignore my nails <laughs> i was picking at them the raw emotion and the weight and the beauty it's so oh my god it is it's mag magical so i reread this because i'm doing research that involves um, his dark materials but I also realized as I was rereading it that it's also for pleasure that I'm rereading it because it's just so good so that's my dramatic 1am rant I have to stop talking good night good night happy Sunday because it's one in the morning now um, hopefully I'll give you a more articulate clip tomorrow. Oh my god. I have to go to bed. I'm dead inside. Hello everybody. It is actually two days later. It is now Monday evening. I didn't end up filming at all yesterday. I spent almost the whole day editing all of the footage for this vlog that I had up until now. And then I watched a whole lot of Netflix. So I didn't really have a super productive day. I mean, I guess in terms of editing I did. So I just didn't have a productive reading day, which is fine because I'm here for the conclusion clip of this vlog. I'm about to film the intro clip to next week's. Um, and I realized that I hadn't filmed a conclusion and I don't wanna end the vlog on the chaotic ramblings that <laughs> preceded this clip. So here I am to tell you that I read nine over 900 pages this week. I read like 940 or 950 pages this week 
and I knew that I was doing well like throughout the week. I finished three books. I finished Listening to the Vanishing Half, which um, I was halfway through at the beginning of the week. I read the entirety of If They Come For Us, which is the poetry collection. I read the entirety pretty much of The Amber Spyglass, which was a really, really big chunk of what I read this week. And then I read bits and pieces of So You Want to Talk About Race and my biography. So I did really, really good this week. I finished three books and I read almost a thousand pages, like nearly shy of a thousand pages. I That's definitely the best week that I've had so far, but I think that if we can keep up this pace, I'm gonna have a killer summer wrap up. It's gonna be incredible. I have so many good books and I think that's part of the reason that I'm reading really quickly right now. So yeah, I just wanted to come on and do my wrap up clip and tell you guys that I read a whole bunch this week, which I'm sure you gathered that from watching. Um, as always, thank you so, so much for watching, especially to the end. If you have any recommendations, requests, suggestions for how I can make these vlogs entertaining, do you want, specifically, do you want, um, what are they called? Montage clips where I'm like reading and I speed it up to music? Do you like seeing me take you guys places do you like seeing food like what i eat any suggestions constructive criticism is obviously welcome and i'm just having a lot of fun and i hope that you guys are having a lot of fun watching these happy reading happy writing and happy living everybody bye